Welcome to Stuck in Vermont, brought to you by Seven Days and sponsored by Hotel Vermont and New England Federal Credit Union. My name's Ava Saulberger. We are downtown in Burlington for the Radio Beans Sweet 16 Bash. We're going to see Cat Wright and her band play this evening. Rainbow color fall from clear blue sky. This place like made it happen, you know? This place like brought us all together into the cauldron and like spit us out. And we we're like, oh, we're a band. Cat Wright is our seven days cover story this week, so you are probably seeing her photo all over town. She's the front woman of the popular Burlington band, formerly known as Cat Wright and the Indomitable Soul Band. They've simplified their name to Cat Wright and are releasing an album this month. One thing that I love about this group and about the music that we make is that everybody kind of likes it, you know, like old people love it and, and like kids love it, college students love it and like everybody in between and that's so special for me. Thank you guys so much. For those of you who don't know, this band was birthed right here on the stage at Radio Bean. Radio Bean is our mom, actually. This is the 87th band to play today. Yeah. <laughs> Burlington's a small town, so when you're lucky enough to see Cat Wright on stage or in the grocery store or walking down the street or maybe hanging up posters for her upcoming show, it's kind of like you hit the jackpot. I always sang, but just kind of to myself and on my own. When I was younger, I was totally misfocused and like a lot of my idols were like slutty pop stars. I wish that girls had more role models that were not a mess. I've always been really interested in vintage things and older things. I always felt more authentic and more beautiful in something that was older. And my most holy moments are always like accompanied by music that I love. came to Vermont seven years ago, touring with my childhood best friend, and we had a folk project called Loveful Heights. I remember that night that we first played Radio Bean, which was my first gig in Burlington. It was totally packed and just buzzing, and we just were able to make a lot of connections. So the summer I got stuck in Vermont, I was like, well, I'm going to go live in uh, Burlington with my boyfriend, Lee. I had very much fallen in love and Lee asked me to marry him. Especially thank you to the woman who's about to play, my lovely wife, Cat Wright. Vermont is a haven for eccentrics and for artists and for thinkers. Places like Radio Bean are on the endangered species list, you know? Small, uh, weird, independently owned little love nests like this. Radio Bean. I became like a front person by accident. The music that I had experienced performing was quiet folk music, harmonies with another woman, so it's almost like the exact opposite. I loved it right from the beginning. Through Radio Bean and through the Thursday Night Jazz residency that used to happen on Thursdays that I was able to kind of get to know Shane Hardiman who plays keys in my band and he was able to introduce me to the other original members of the band and for you know the better part of five years we played every Thursday at Radio Bean. Originally it was just covers and we would rehearse every Thursday morning at Shane's house in his living room. It's great to be around your friends, it's great to be around other artists, it's great to be around people who make you laugh and are inspiring and kind and humble and really talented. We made the decision to 
Jock the Indomitable Soul Band from the name. Many of our songs are very collaboratively written and as we released this first album into the world we just wanted to give like the most accurate representation that will also stand the test of time. The modern musician is not gonna survive if they're just a musician. I've done a ton of these so far. <laughs> Every time we have a show, I pretty much bust my bust my butt, and I'm out there like in the middle of the night, all hours of the day, like putting flowers on cars and postering, trying to put out an album and grow the band and like grow regionally. I'm I'm doing all of our social media, all of our tour managing, I'm advancing all of the shows with the venues and the support acts and I'm you know creating promotional materials and I'm coordinating the band and I'm scheduling rehearsals, scheduling stuff like this and I'm trying to get publicity and like it's a lot of tasks. You have to be so shameless in your self-promotion which is really hard because I don't want to look at my face all the time. Ta-da! <laughs> I'm not super social, extroverted introvert. So like I really do recharge from time alone and when I don't have that, I'm like not a happy camper. I was getting on the ferry in Plattsburgh a few weeks ago and I had a cold and I was just like so yucky and gross. Oh, are you cat right? And I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> as long as I have like good people around me and good food and like space and time, I can like always kind of come back to that groundedness. You're never going to see me like Miley Cyrusing out or something, you know, trying to be a role model as much as I can for other young women and young people in general. You can join Kat Wright and her band at Higher Ground on November 18th for their album release party. We will get stuck in Vermont with you again real soon. Follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and sign up for our weekly email alerts. Okay, bye. People must be surprised when they're like, Kat Wright putting up Kat Wright posters? I know. It's actually kind of embarrassing. I always feel embarrassed. I think it makes you more of a rock star. You do? I always yeah. feel like a really big nerd. I'm like, oh, there I am with a poster of my own <laughs> face on it. Sometimes I do wear my sunglasses in the co-op, though. <laughs> <laughs> the co-op is just for everyone. I mean, I love it. But you just gotta, <sighs> gotta get you know, in, you right gotta place. get in, you gotta get out. <laughs>